Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners, this is a video for the subject of education, for the course of Bachelors in Education and for the paper of Conceptual Foundations of Education. Here we are going to have a discussion on philosophical basis of education and in this lecture we will discuss the educational ideas of Paulo Freire. This video is being recorded by Dr. Iram Khan. The course coordinator and the presenter of this video is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. The academic expert or reviewer for this video is Professor Jaseem Ahmed from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. This video is produced under the project DTH Swayam Prabha channels of MHRD and at present the Ministry of Education, Government of India. Hello my dear students, I am Dr. Iram Khan, Assistant Professor at IASC Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Today we are going to have a discussion on the philosophical basis of education and here in this lecture we will be discussing the educational ideas of Paulo Freire. So let us start the discussion first with the objectives. The objectives of this lecture are to discuss the life history of Paulo Freire, to explain the various educational ideas of Paulo Freire in terms of his philosophy of education to elaborate the significance of the ideas of Freire with respect to education in our country. Let us just have a look on the brief life history of Paulo Freire. His full name was Paulo Reglas Neves Freire and he was born in Brazil in 1921. He was an educator, a philosopher, who was a leading advocate of critical pedagogy. He is best known for his influential work, which is popularly called as Pedagogy of the Oppressed, which is generally considered one of the foundational texts of the critical pedagogy movement. Freire contributed a philosophy of education, which blended classical approaches stemming from uh, Plato, and the modern Marxist or the post-Marxist and anti-colonialist thinkers. So we can see that he has got a very renowned place. He has got a very important place whenever we talk about the uh, different philosophies of education. So his contribution is tremendous. Paulo Freire grew up in the northeast of Brazil where his experiences deeply influenced his entire work of his life. So the world economic crisis forced him to know hunger and poverty at a very young age. In his own words, he has once quoted, I didn't understand anything because of my hunger. I was not dumb. It wasn't lack of interest. My social condition didn't allow me to have an education. Experience showed me once again the relationship between social class and knowledge. Quotes close. So you can just see that how much uh, uh, these words are reflecting that how this uh, entire poverty and the hunger has made a very kind of impact on his philosophy of life. And because Freire lived among poor rural families and 
the families of laborers he gained a deep understanding of their lives and of the effects of social uh, or uh, the socio economics or uh, a different type of uh, aspects which are related to the economic status of these families and he has seen the impact on the education uh, on these people who were having a, a very uh, kind of poor uh, background their socio economic status was very uh, poor so freire became a grammar teacher while still he was in high school even then his institution pushed him towards a dialogic education in which he strived to understand students expectations and then he got married to elza his wife elza influenced him to intensely pursue his studies and helped helped him to elaborate his ground breaking educational methods freire's complete structure of educational thought began to manifest with his appointment in 1946 as a director of education at sesi an employers institution set up to help workers and their families here he began to see more disconnections between the elite section of the society or the elitist educational practices and the real lives of the working class and in the words of uh, the eminent scholar gadotti he says that thus a study of the language of the people was the starting point for the development of his work and by his he actually means the paulo freire's work and during this time freire also participated in the movement for uh, popular culture and supported the active exercise of democracy in lectures and also in his phd thesis which was titled as uh, present day education in brazil which was uh, basically he did his phd and the thesis was uh, published in the year 1959 paulo freire died in 1997 in the age of 75 but his uh, contributions in terms of the development of uh, this prominent pedagogy is so important to understand to internalize and to make it appearing in our curriculum curricular systems that we have to study whenever we are talking about the pedagogy we have to see that what exactly are the views of paulo freire let us discuss the pedagogy developed by paulo freire freire's pedagogy developed in the particular historical and political circumstance which was very much influenced by neo colonialism and imperialism so basically at that time a lot of transformational changes were happening in the society and this is the reason why this uh, pedagogy which is developed by freire is very much influenced by the uh, the scenario which was happening at his time freire's perception of society and the social relations is based on the class relations he actually uh, observes or he Uh, extends his uh, uh, views on the social dynamics through the oppressor oppressed dialectic so freire discuss two types of knowledge unconscious sometimes the practical knowledge which can be considered as the practical knowledge and the critical or the reflective or theory knowledge so these two types of uh, knowledges are basically discussed by him when he talks about the pedagogy the beliefs are shaped into knowledge by discussion and critical reflection knowledge should not be limited to logic and content or emotions and superstitions but it should seek the connections between understandings and feelings so these are those uh, things which have given a kind of uh, structure or a kind of base to the pedagogy which he tried to develop so freire's pedagogical critique of banking education and his problem posing pedagogical propositions 
are rooted in his concept of man and here by man because in most of the texts which he has developed the scriptures and the books he is uh, uh, denoting human beings as man so we should not confuse it with uh, that he is not talking about women basically by man he is talking about the human beings so paulo freire was highly critical of the prevailing educational practices of his time whatever was actually practiced in terms of education of the children at his time when he was uh, growing up and he was developing his pedagogy so he called education as it was practiced as the banking concept of education in this banking concept education is treated and practiced as a depositing activity in this depositing act students become depositories what does this mean like all the knowledge which is basically the teacher is willing to uh, to give to the student becomes deposited in him or her so the student becomes the depository and the teacher becomes the depositor so the scope of action allowed to the students extends only as far as receiving or filling and storing the deposits by acting as a depositor the teacher domesticates the child into oppressor consciousness so basically by this particular act a kind of oppression is happening because everything is being imposed being filled or stored in the in the minds of the students so according to freire the banking concept of education has done immense damage to teacher taught relationship and the process of education freire's description of banking education and his description of problem posing education are based on his understanding about man his consciousness and relation to the world according to freire banking education begins with a false understanding of men as objects implicit in banking concept is the assumption of a dichotomy between man and the world because here man is actually disconnected with the world in which this this human being is actually living so man becomes merely the uh, a person who is in the world not with the world or with others who are again the part of the world man is spectator not the recreator so basically he is not participating in the entire act of getting educated he is just uh, attaining or he is just passively getting filled in with the knowledge which the teacher is trying to bank in in him or her so uh, he is not participating this person is not participating in the teaching learning process so in this view man is not a conscious being he or she is rather a possessor of the consciousness maybe we can consider him as an empty mind or the passively open mind which is not actually open to any of those receptions of the deposits of reality from the world outside so basically everything is happening in a passive way where the knowledge is being deposited by the teacher and the without actually thinking about anything this person who is getting all those knowledge filled in is accepting whatever is being given to him or her so in a way a kind of oppression is happening because there is no any kind of participatory approach or nothing is being uh, done in a way in which the other person who is the receiver is also participating in the process so in this way we can see here that a kind of oppression has started and it is going to take place throughout the process so freire's pedagogy of literacy education involves not only reading the word w o r d word but also reading the world 
this involves the development of critical consciousness why because once we are attaining the knowledge or the literacy or the word knowledge and we are not getting ourselves attached to the world in which we are staying then this knowledge will be uh, somehow not connected with the surroundings in which we stay so basically this involves the development of critical consciousness whenever we are connecting ourselves the knowledge which we are attaining with the outside world in in that case we are trying to uh, to develop the critical consciousness but if we are not doing that then we are making ourselves deprived with the outside world in which we are staying so the formation of critical consciousness allows people to question the nature of their historical and social situation to read this world with the goal of acting as subjects in the creation of a democratic society so what he says that we should not act as an object we should act as an subject so that we can participate in this process where we are getting something and then we have to give back to the world and this is only possible if we understand the world so for education freire implies a dialogic exchange between teachers and students where both learn both question both reflect and both participate in the meaning making process and we know that what exactly this meaning making process is all about whenever we talk about the meaning making process the concept of constructivism comes into picture but here the term was not introduced but he is talking a lot about the meaning making process he says that both of the sides the teacher and the student should make a dialogue between themselves they they both ha should have the opportunity to question each other one should not accept what whatever is told to him or her by a person who is maybe considered as the teacher or the more knowledgeable other so both have the uh, should have the opportunity to reflect and to participate in the meaning making process so concretely this pedagogy begins with the teacher who is basically mingling among the community who is actually participating in the community he is he or she is asking questions to the people and gathering a list of words used in their daily lives because here uh, i'm just discussing about the uh, the pedagogy at one of uh, his projects he talked about the literacy education which has given a lot of uh, impetus to other sort of pedagogical aspects uh, so this is important to talk about so here uh, he he has actually began with with the point that teachers should mingle among the community if we are talking about the literacy education and he or she should ask questions to the people and people should be uh, allowed to ask questions to him and in this way uh, the gathering of a list of words which are used in the daily lives can happen the teacher was to begin to understand the social reality of the people and develop a list of generative words and themes which could lead to discussion in the classroom or maybe any any sort of class or the cultural circles and wherever there is a possibility of discussion so by making these words because here literacy is the important thing the, uh, on which he is talking about so by making words which are relevant to the lives of people the process of conscientization could begin in which the social construction of reality might be critically examined so from here you can see that he is starting to talk about the conscientization and he is trying to understand the lives of the people in terms of uh, educating them whenever we talk about the lives of the people we have to see the social construction in which these people are the part of freire has talked about 
problem posing uh, in education a lot. The program content of problem posing education is generated from the investigation into this thematic universe. Banking education uh, through its pedagogy works for the continuation of domination. On the other hand, the problem posing education through its pedagogy thrives for liberation because we all know that if one problem is posed by a person and the other person is trying to solve the problem or to, uh, to make the solutions done, then there will be the collaborative action happening. So here there will be no uh, kind of banking activity. So Freire has proposed a pedagogy to conscientize human beings based on praxis and dialogue. Conscientization constitutes both growing critical awareness of the learner by himself or herself and a willingness to act on the reality to change the entire process. Praxis is interwoven methodological state of human action and reflection. Whereas dialogue is not only a method of education but also an existential necessity for humanization. Because whenever a dialogue is happening, we are respecting the points which are made by one person and the other person basically is going to react on it. So there is a reciprocation of the thought process happening in terms of making the dialogue. So we can say that here the humanization uh, point of view is taken care of. So in this way, learning is a process where knowledge is presented to all of us. And then it is shaped through understanding discussion and reflection. Education should raise the awareness of the students so that they become subjects and should, they should not act as an object. So they become the subject who are going to particip participate in this world so that they can get themselves educated in a way that they become a citizen who, who can actually think of. So this was something which, which was emphasized by Paulo Freire a lot. So that this is done by teaching students to think democratically and to continually question and make meaning from everything they learn. So they should not passively attain or just accept whatever is being given to, him, to, to them. Basically, they are supposed to question. If they don't agree with what is taught to them, they should disagree they should question and and the teacher should also be very much accepting the teacher should be having that much caliber that much courage that the question must be accepted the question made by the student must be accepted by him or her and then there should be a discussion there should be a dialogue happening between the teacher and the taught and and in this uh, due course of this dialogue the meaning making process happens and the knowledge automatically is being attained by this thought as well the teacher is uh, getting awakened the teacher is also adding up some sort of knowledge to, to his own uh, you can see the collection of the knowledge which this teacher is having so we can't say that only the student is attaining or gaining basically the teacher is also learning in the same way in which the, the thought is being uh, you can say the thought is attaining from this dialogue. So both are being um, very much, uh, you can say, becoming much more knowledgeable by this dialogue being happened between the teacher and the thought. Freire firmly believed that knowing is a social process whose individual dimension, however, cannot be forgotten or even devalued. So the social process on which he has given a lot of emphasis, basically he says that society or the uh, processes which are happening in the lives or uh, while uh, we are staying in a, in a scenario in, the, in this world, th those experiences which we are gaining, these cannot be forgotten. And even these cannot be um, devalued. The process of knowing which evolves or which involves the whole conscious self or the feelings, emotions, memory, affects 
an epistemological curious mind focused on the object equally involves other thinking subjects and what exactly this means that others also capable of knowing and they can be curious so we cannot uh, think of that uh, this curiosity can only be in the mind of the student basically the teacher is also and he or she should also be curious uh, equally curious and equally um, focused on any of those things or on any of those subject matters on which this uh, knowledge uh, transfer like uh, transiting process is being happened so this simply means that the relationship called thinking is not enclosed in a relationship which can be considered as thinking subjects and knowable object here you can see that we can't uh, we can't brand somebody that this person only can think and the other person cannot think but only attain so here the point is that thinking subject and knowable object this type of relationship is not enclosed so, so this is something which can be done by both so because it extends to other thinking subjects so one person who is at this moment the thinking subject can be can can be transformed into into somebody else so one teacher can be transformed into a student once this dialogue is happening because the, then if we mean by a student that a person who is attaining the knowledge then even the teacher can attain the knowledge by this dialogue which is happening so we can't say that somebody one person is the thinking subject and the other person is the uh, knowable object both can be interchangeably uh, like both the parts can be played by uh, by each other interchangeably so fere believed that teaching is a political process it must be a democratic process to avoid teaching authority and the dependence the teacher must learn about and also the teacher must learn from the student so that knowledge can be constructed in ways that are meaningful to the student the teacher must become learner and the learner must become teacher so here the, you should not uh, consider these words so important basically the attainment of knowledge is very much important so it should not be branded that one person is a teacher and the other person is a student so uh, it, this can't be interchanged it should happen interchangeably and then only it will be possible for the learners to become the productive uh, subjects of the meaning or knowledge of the object so basically in this way only those who are attaining knowledge can become the productive citizens and they can actually attain the knowledge without any oppression so it is in this dialectic moment that teaching and learning become knowing and re-knowing the learners gradually know what they did not know yet and the educators re-know at times what they knew before is actually uh, refurbished or you can say that it is revised and it is Um, a lot of things are added into the knowledge which they already have so in this way we can say that both are uh, both are achieving a lot of knowledge both are uh, are acquiring a lot of knowledge and here because the dialogue is happening the process is becoming very much a democratic so there is no oppression so this is something which is which is very much focused by paulo freire he was talking a lot about uh, the Uh, oppress oppression which happens which actually happened at his time when there was a kind of uh, distance between the teacher and the taught and the only uh, way of uh, teaching was that one person is transacting the knowledge to the other person and without thinking much about what exactly is be being given the person who was accepting the knowledge was actually accepting it so he was against this uh, Uh, this uh, oppressionistic uh, way of teaching and he said that there should be 
an interchange there should be a dialectic movement which should be there among the teacher and the taught so we have talked a lot about the pedagogy of uh, paulo freire which was suggested by him and in a way we have discussed about the critical pedagogy but still uh, we have to just make few of those points uh, where he is declaring this uh, critical pedagogy uh, very much political it is uh, considered to be very much influenced by the politics so freire's critical pedagogy talked about the uh, making of the teachers and students aware of the politics that surrounded the education system the way students are taught and what they are taught serves a political agenda and at times even unknowingly teachers bring that uh, political agenda inside the classroom so teachers themselves have political notions which at times they bring into the classroom few of the times these agendas uh, come inside the cl classroom unknowingly and there are few times which may be intentional so freire has quoted at one place that education makes sense because women and men learn that through learning they can make and remake themselves because women and men are able to take responsibility for themselves as being capable of knowing of knowing what they know and knowing that they don't so basically these words reflect that if a person takes the responsibility of the knowledge which he or she is attaining and he is aware of that what exactly is being given to him what exactly is being acquired by him or her then only the sole purpose or the, the complete purpose of attaining knowledge will be solved so the purpose of freire's education actually is liberation liberation for from all the bondages whenever we we attain some sort of education which is uh, influenced by the politics or the the thought process which is prevalent at that time we are not considered as liberated souls but here to freire talks about the education which is liberated and the sole uh, uh, purpose of education is liberation it is achieved through the authentic dialogue in which everyone speaks their own word with the mediation of the word to name the world this is in a nutshell uh, if we we uh, try to explain the pedagogy of the oppressed basically these words which i just quoted are the nutshell or you can say the uh, crux of pedagogy of the oppressed let us just have a look and uh, try to analyze freire's pedagogy uh, we are able to identify few of his uh, significant contributions to education but we should have a look um, very critically and try to analyze that what exactly are those contributions which are considered very significant whenever we talk about uh, education and this pedagogy which is given by freire so the first uh, point which i would like to mention is that emphasis on dialogue which he has actually made he made a lot of emphasis on dialogue we have just uh, uh, talked about a lot on this point uh, he upheld that education is a dialogical or you can say that uh, in in uh, very common words a conversational process rather than a curricular form so whatever is formal that is also there but it should be very much uh, sort of informal or informal or conversational and this dialogue which is happening should not involve one person acting on another what does it mean that one person is making the lecture or and rest of them are just listening to him or her this is not considered to be considered as the dialogue dialogue should be reciprocal so 
if the people are working with each other they are making all those conversations in a reciprocal manner then we can say that uh, this uh, dialogue becomes purposeful so a dialogue not only requires critical thinking but also generates critical thinking in the participants so in a way it works as a generator of or you can say a a method of creating critic, critical thinking among the participants those people who are making the dialogue the next significant contribution or uh, the important thing of the pedagogy of paulo freire is the concern with praxis so action that is informed and linked to certain values Freire upheld that dialogue should result not only in deepening the understanding, but also in taking informal actions and making a difference in the world. So, whatever dialogues are happening, they should have a purpose, and that purpose should be that we are going to make some sort of difference in the world. So, the value in uh, any sort of value. Uh, should be attached with whatever is happening in terms of attainment of knowledge then the next point which was emphasized by him is the concern with conscientization developing the consciousness basically what does it mean it means that developing consciousness that is understood to have the power to transform the reality so whenever we are trying to transform something we are trying to make uh, or bring some change for making that we should be conscious enough we should understand the entire thing which is going to take a, a leap or it is going to take to uh, to be changed so without understanding anything if we are attaining everything we are just uh, like in in case of a teacher and taught if this the the taught or the student is actually um making all those things uh, uh, accepting all those things without understanding or without questioning the teacher or the the, the person who is actually uh, giving the knowledge in that case there will be no soul into that knowledge and this is not going to have any power which can be transformational so it is very important to understand whatever is being given to you in terms of transaction of knowledge then the next emphasis uh, or the next point which is emphasized is the insistence on lived experience of participants this is something which is very important why because uh, if we see the society if even if we see uh, or observe our classrooms we will find that there are varied set of students those students who are coming from different strata from different socio economic status from different uh, sort of households so we have to see that what are the lived experiences of these participants and these uh, experiences should be made some sort of uh, part of the entire teaching learning process so provide educational activity to suit the living situation or the experience of the people so whenever we talk about the pedagogy which is which is being uh, used inside the classroom if this pedagogy is taking care of that what exactly is the uh, is the spread or the composition of the classroom who are the students who are coming from a, a particular set of the uh, of of uh, the society and if we take care of and if we try to understand that what are those experiences which uh, which these children are having and if we try to make a, a dialogue with them where they they try to exchange their knowledge their experiences these experiences are going to help other students to understand the social practices and uh, in this way these experiences the experience sharing can become a methodology uh, which is enhancing the knowledge of the students and this is something which is which can be considered as the very important contribution of paulo freire 
even if we go ahead and just have a look to the um, NCF 2005, we will find this this particular uh, experiential uh, setup or this experience of uh, participants and the sharing of experiences add as a, a major methodology which can be the part of the educational system which is considered by even the NCF 2005. So these are few of those uh, uh, points which actually uh, display that what exactly is the significant contribution to education by Paulo Freire. So influence of uh, Freire's view uh, can be very properly observed in NCF 2005. Uh, lots of uh, places are there where uh, the NCF talks about the critical pedagogy. So wherein it is mentioned that teaching is no more an activity of planning a lesson or presenting ready-made knowledge for achieving outcomes that can be measured objectively. So basically measuring is again uh, not considered as a very uh, kind of important activity. Gaining knowledge, which is practical in a sense, and also uh, the experiences which, which are already there can be used for attaining some more uh, knowledge which can be used further in life is given a lot of importance in NCF 2005. Times uh, NCF talks about the uh, constructivism. Basically, the the ethos of NCF 2005 is based on uh, the constructivism, which is a meaning-making process. And here, uh, the role of teacher is again very much, uh, very much uh, li likely to to be uh, considered as talking about the Freire's pedagogy. So it has been seen as a process of making children think and try out what they are learning. So they should not be a passive takers of whatever is being given to them. They should participate in their own learning. A teacher has to shift away from the traditional outlook of just providing information or to, uh, to make the eliciting and guiding a student. The teacher's role is much more. Basically, a teacher's role is a person who should be facilitating the construction of knowledge and engaging the children by, by raising the right kind of questions and organizing well-chosen activities and tasks. So basically, in um, indirect way, this teacher is always there uh, and always be, being the part of the entire uh, process where the student is getting educated. But directly, any uh, any kind of spoon feeding or uh, just information sharing is not happening. So the teacher is just playing a role of a facilitator. And uh, by this facilitation, the construction of knowledge, by the engagement of the, the children, the construction of knowledge is happening on its own. So active engagement in the in the quoted words of NCF 2005, active engagement involves inquiry, exploration, questioning, debates, application, and reflection leading to theory building and creation of ideas, positions. Schools must provide opportunities to question, inquire, debate, reflect, and arrive at concepts or create new ideas. These are the words which are quoted in NCF 2005. And these words basically give an idea that how much influence NCF 2005 has got from the ideology which is uh, being uh, shown by the pedagogical aspects of Paulo Freire. Because he, talk, he has also talked about the inquiry, the questioning, making debates, dialogue, then uh, the, uh, the critical understanding of things, logical uh, understanding, and a constant dialogue between the teacher and the student. And all these things are very much enshrined in the ideology which is adapted by NCF 2005. 
so uh, now we have reached to the end of this uh, lecture we have talked about freire's uh, life history in brief at the starting of the lecture and uh, then we have seen that freire's perception of society and social relations is based on class relations because he himself uh, has has been the victim of these uh, class relations and he was uh, uh, facing a lot of uh, differences the class differences in the early life uh, when he was uh, he was struggling with the uh, lots and lots of poverty so he sees social dynamics through the oppressor oppressed dialectic his pedagogical critique of banking education and his problem posing pedagogical propositions are rooted in his concept of man where he, according to him here the man is the human being so paulo freire was highly critical of uh, prevailing educational practices that practices which were prevailing at that time when he was actually growing up praxis is interwoven methodological state of human action and reflection and dialogue is not only a method of education but an existential necessity for humanization so these are those things which are mentioned by him when he talked about his pedagogy freire firmly believed that knowing is a social process whose individual dimension however cannot be forgotten or even devalued freire's critical pedagogy which is very famous and has given a lot of influence to many curricular documents uh, it talked about making teachers and students aware of the politics that sound basically that uh, that is very much sounded or which you can say is uh, overpowering the education most of the time we we can actually uh, if we critically observe we can find that so awareness is the key where he says that this critical pedagogy uh, is talking about so we should be aware of that there should be uh, some of those ways in which we can divide uh, this this politics which is which is actually part of the system so the way students are taught and what they are taught serves a political agenda and uh, we we can see that how we can uh, make a limitation or we can just limit it so we have analyzed uh, the the freire's pedagogy what are those components and uh, what exactly he meant when he is uh, giving suggestions and he is emphasizing his pedagogy and uh, then we have also seen that how our ncf 2005 is having a lot of impressions a lot of uh, influences uh, from the pedagogy which is given by paulo freire so which which can be seen at many places in the ncf 2000 so these are those important references and suggested links which i have uh, considered while preparation of this lecture and you can see that there are a lot of books which are authored by uh, paulo freire uh, himself like the fa very famous book pedagogy of the oppressed and also he has written a lot of many other books like the pedagogy of hope pedagogy of the heart pedagogy of the city pedagogy in process Uh, and there are few more uh, books which are uh, authored by him with others and uh, there are many other uh, authors who have written a lot about uh, paulo freire's uh, uh, pedagogy and his thought processes so few of them are mentioned here which you can just go ahead and read because uh, these are those books which will be providing you uh, some sort of awakening whenever you you are talking about the transformations which have happened uh, with time in the educational process and those uh, uh, those thoughts those uh, uh, important uh, uh, changes have got a lot of uh, importance in the entire development of our educational systems so uh, 
it is very important to read more about uh, the pedagogy and the different uh, thought processes of uh, Paulo Freire. He himself uh, was a celebrated author. So I hope that you all will, uh, will read and will be considering these books useful and will go ahead and study more about his thought processes. For today, uh, this is all about uh, this uh, thought process of uh, Paulo Freire. From my side, uh, I am taking leave from you all uh, and we will see each other in another session, in another lecture. Thank you so much. You were watching a video on philosophical basis of education and in this lecture we discussed educational ideas of Paulo Freire. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the national lockdown period for COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.